Happy 30th birthday, Harry Styles. <laughs> this one's for you. Hey guys, don't mind the plain background. I just have this because we're gonna green screen today. Welcome back to my channel though. If you're new, hi, welcome. My name is Jasmine. I'm in the music business. I make music pop culture videos here on my channel. This is the second really long deep dive that I've done on my channel. So if you're into that kind of thing, subscribe. I would love to have you around. I would love to keep you. So in honor of Harry Styles' 30th birthday, I wanted to do a career deep dive for him. But yeah, this timeline is gonna be ridiculous detailed. We're gonna start with the beginning of Harry's time on earth and then just go straight through his career leading up until now. It's gonna be wild. It's gonna be emotional. So I hope you're prepared. <laughs> yeah, so if I were you, I would just grab a drink, a snack you love, get settled in, and let's talk all about Harry Styles. We have no time to waste here. So we begin in 1994. Clearly this picture is not from 1994, but I wanted to start with the baby pic. He was born on February 1st in 1994 in Redditch. He did move to Holmes Chapel when he was a kid. I've talked about this in another video before when I was covering One Direction, but Holmes Chapel is like a small village. So Harry was the local little village lad boy. Since Harry was born on February 1st, that also makes him an Aquarius man. Whatever that means, am I right? I don't know much about astrology, but I have heard that Harry being an Aquarius man really checks out for him, so I'm just gonna trust the astrology girlies on that one. Okay, so 2009, Harry attends sixth form and forms a band with his friends, Nick, Hayden, and Will, called White Eskimo, and Harry is the lead vocalist of this band. Now, Harry's had a history with being super interested in music leading up to making this band. It's been said that when he was a kid, he would like do covers on his little karaoke machine that he got. He loved to cover Elvis, and he was just a natural sort of musical performer type of person so it makes a lot of sense that he ended up in a band when he was in sixth form one of the band members of white eskimo nick would later give an interview saying that harry was actually really nervous to sing in front of people in the beginning and he was really afraid that his classmates were going to laugh at him and bully him for being in a band but when they started the band and doing performances people actually really liked harry and thought he was really talented and really applauded his showmanship i read the band member nick's full interview for this video and in the interview he just went on and on about Harry's ability to sing and perform and how it was so natural for him like a gift people just adored Harry and at this time he worked in a bakery so famously never forget he said that Harry would be in the back of the bakery though like singing while he was sweeping the floor and while he was and he would be singing loud enough for people to hear him so people would compliment him they'd be like wow that little lad boy in the back sweeping and singing is really good. And White Eskimo ended up doing a Battle of the Bands competition and winning. And this is what would actually prompt Harry's mom, Anne, to encourage him to audition for The X Factor UK. April 2010 in Manchester, Harry auditions for The X Factor UK at the ripe age of 16 years old. This was the seventh season The X Factor, which had launched some very successful careers in the UK and definitely was the place to be if you were looking for a record deal. So as you can see, we have some interesting fashion choices going on here. I think the way that we're gonna watch Harry's fashion like expand and change that this video is gonna be crazy. But his family also came with him while he was auditioning for The X Factor, obviously, to support him. And they wore these homemade t-shirts. They say, we think Harry has The X Factor. Crying, sobbing, shaking, puking. And they were right, he did have it. And they were right, so. During Harry's audition, a lot of people were extremely charmed by him before he even started singing. So I feel like a lot of people were rooting for him very quickly. I mean, come on, look at these dimples and the curls. He told everyone he works in a bakery. And this iconic line was born. I work in a bakery. What do you do in the bakery? Um, I like serve. <laughs> yeah, he likes to serve. Serve cunt. Okay, and with a name like Harry Styles too though, like superstar material, some might say, like that's your real name. If I was a judge on The X Factor and Harry came on stage and was like, I'm Harry Styles, I would have been like, really? Did you just make that up? Cause it's, it's almost too good, like it's too good. So yeah, he originally auditioned for The X Factor with Train's Hazel sister, but then Simon said the track wasn't right for him and asked him if he had anything else to perform. So he switched and did an acapella version of Stevie Wonder's Isn't She Lovely, which is the more well-known audition that was actually aired. Let me just say, that's history. Herstory. Herstory. 
I feel like Harry's audition wasn't something that was like gonna blow the socks off of people, you know what I mean? Compared to other auditions that we've seen in history on The X Factor. But he did have so much potential when he auditioned. Like I said, he was so charming. He seemed very confident. And he had a good enough voice, so I see how, as a judge, you could sit there and watch that and be like, look at his potential. I'm going to coach him. He's going to get a vocal coach. He's going to get styled. He's going to grow up and grow into his voice, and he's going to be amazing. So it's really about the potential that you can see there. And the judges did see that potential in Harry, and he got through and made it to the next round of the X Factor called Boot Camp. So as we know, Harry would perform another song again for the Boot Camp round of the X Factor. He was in the boys' category, and at Boot Camp, he was also forced to do a choreographed dance to Lady Gaga's hits. Telephone. <laughs> So Harry did not make it past the boot camp round. He was originally eliminated crying tears all night long with his little gray beanie. But alas, Nicole Scherzinger suggests that Harry and the four other losers from the boys category should form a boy band and go through on the X Factor in this boy band. Yeah, Nicole Scherzinger bitch, not Simon Cowell. So on July 23rd, 2010, Harry becomes one fifth of One Direction alongside Niall Horan, Louis Tomlinson, Zayn Malik, and Liam Payne. If you want an in-depth look like the one we're doing right now on One Direction and their career, Highly suggest my video called One Direction's Entire Career. It's an almost two hour long deep dive going over their career and everything that they did and a lot of stuff about the fandom, iconic moments, just breaks it all down. But what I do wanna do for this video is look across 2010 through 2015 when One Direction was a band and just kind of highlight and talk about some key Harry moments specifically. So here we have August 22nd, 2010. This is Harry's first ever tweet that that says, enjoying my day at home, smiley face. Now, I don't know what his profile picture was at the time. I tried to look, y'all. But this tweet was almost exactly a month after One Direction was formed. One Direction's formation didn't air on TV until September 2010. So I'm not even sure if Harry had followers at this point because he tweeted this before the One Direction formation aired on The X Factor. So he might've been just tweeting to the void. <laughs> I'm definitely not gonna include Harry's every single tweet in this video, but this one just felt significant because it's the first time he said anything. I will say though, something that I have found and noted in my research about Harry is that he was obsessed with this face in 2010 and a little bit in 2011. He ended almost every single tweet with this happy face back in this time. And that is devastating. October 9th, 2010. Harry's iconic viral shoulder dance move is born during One Direction's performance of Viva La Vida on The X Factor. Listen, this video is about all things relevant to Harry, so I had to put this in here. Like the shoulder dance, especially because he ends up recreating this during Love on Tour. Again, that's history. That's herstory. That's herstory. <laughs> okay, November 30th, 2010. The Sex Factor segment of Harry getting a haircut is released. I should note that this was during eight week of the competition eight week this was during week eight of the competition i included this segment in this video just because i wanted to specifically note several guys in the uk were going to the barber shop and asking for harry's haircut specifically <laughs> i'm not sure if this is true or if the guy cutting harry's hair just wanted him to feel really good but he literally says in this video that this hairstyle is all over the place now because harry's on the x factor and he's already getting really popular but I do think that his curls were an absolute staple in 2010. So we must not forget. August 19th, 2011. What Makes You Beautiful music video is released and Harry does the solo featuring Madison McMillan. Harry was 17 when they did this, like when they filmed What Makes You Beautiful and he did the solo all up in this girl's face. Like, <laughs> can you imagine? This was like some random guy from high school serenading you. All right, December 18th, 2011. One Direction began their Up All Night tour. And we learn that Harry's new signature look is a blazer and like some chinos. Classic. Then February 1st, 2012, this is Harry's 18th birthday and he gets his first ever tattoo. This tattoo is a star, as you can see, the outline of a star, but later he would get the star shaded in. Iconic, a star for a star, very fitting. I too got my very first ever tattoo when I turned 18. And funny enough, my first tattoo when I turned 18 was a Harry quote. It says, choose love y'all. 
after Harry's Choose Love speech when he was on tour. So if you really think about it, we're just so cosmically connected. Also on February 1st in 2012, Harry tweeted, I feel like I've woken up with suddenly more facial hair and a deeper voice. Thank you for all your lovely birthday messages. That damn smiley face and then some kisses. Just wondering why he capitalized the B in birthday, like he emphasized birthday here. Also, remember when he used to thank us for the birthday messages? <laughs> yeah, that's probably never going to happen again. I mean, maybe. Never say never. Justin Bieber literally said it the best. Never say never. But also, this is just very, like, jarring for me because this was his 18th birthday. And now this is being uploaded on his 30th birthday. April 7th, 2012. I Go One Direction premieres on Nickelodeon and Harry basically stars in it. So this was Harry's acting debut. Dunkirk was not his first rodeo. Laid up in the bed with jungle worms, trying to get Carly to take care of him. Okay, Harry. I haven't seen this episode of iCarly in years, and I think if I watched it now, I would implode like a Victorian child eating a hot Cheeto. May 19th, 2012. Harry's very first Instagram post, and it's of Deers. And the caption is, Deerstagram with a question mark. That is so cute of him to post pictures of himself for us. November 8th, 2012. Harry gets his iconic sparrow tattoos. Sparrows, swallows. Um, Harry got birds tattooed on him. Let's just say that. Fun fact, one of these birds actually covers up another tattoo Harry used to have that was a banner, like a flowy banner that spelled out love. It's called the love banner. And he used to have that, but then he covered it with the sparrows. Don't know if you guys know that, but if you don't, now you do. This is what the Harry deep dive is for. Okay, December 5th, 2012, Harry posts what would go on to be his iconic Madison Square Garden pose for the very first time. History. Herstory. Herstory. January 1st, 2013, Harry tweets, it's 2013. And thus begins a tradition. He would go on from this day to post, it's insert year, every single year until 2020. 2019 was the last time he posted that and then he didn't in 2020. And look what happened. Look what happened in 2020. You remember. And it all was because Harry didn't tweet the year. So January 23rd in 2013, Harry gets his butterfly tattoo. This is my mom's birthday. This is Mariska Hargitay's birthday. Um, very important information. Also, yes, butterfly. I know some of you bitches call it a moth, but I just won't stand for that. I don't care. Harry himself can say it's a moth and I'm going to disagree with him because it's a butterfly in my world. This may arguably be like Harry's most iconic tattoo. I mean, come on. I know so many people who have copied this tattoo. One time I started working at this coffee shop and I met this girl who was supposed to train me and she noticed on my phone case that I had Harry at the time. And she literally gasps and then goes to lift up her shirt in the middle of this coffee shop, like bra out and she has Harry's butterfly down her. And that wasn't even the first time I had seen someone get it. So many people have his butterfly, okay? It's really iconic. And I honestly do think the hottest thing a girl can do is tattoo Harry's butterfly, like right beneath the titties. All right, February 1st, 2013, Harry turns 19. He's 19 and he's on fire, et cetera, et cetera. We love you, Lord. And by Lord, I mean Lord Ella, Lord, the singer, solar power, royals, not the Lord, Jesus Christ. I had to include Harry's 19th birthday because it was probably his most iconic birthday to date. Like, I don't think he's had a birthday like this <laughs> since he turned 19, where it was like we knew exactly what he was doing and we got multiple pictures of him celebrating. As soon as you say Harry's 19th birthday, I think about this patterned shirt. It's so iconic. There was pictures of him all over the internet, partying with his friends, partying with Nick Grimshaw, who, by the way, got him strippers for his birthday. And there are pictures of Harry being really flustered and shy. Hair streaming indeed like we have not seen a birthday like this since <laughs> october 22nd 2014 harry posts on instagram in black and white for the first time he would go on to make his whole feed black and white until may of 2015 the black and white feed though staple a moment in time may we never forget he was in his ig bag he wanted the aesthetic he was taking his little photo there's also this running joke that Harry was pissed off when he had to post One Direction promo because if you look at his feed in this time it's like all these pretty black and white pictures and then it's like made in the a.m. <laughs> September 3rd 2015 Harry holds up a pride flag on stage. 
Harry was the first and only member to do this in One Direction and then went on to continue doing this so often that it became like his thing to wave different, a bunch of different pride flags at his shows. I wanted to put this in this video because it's so monumental, so, so monumental. I very vividly remember the first time he ever rose the pride flag and it was just the craziest, biggest news ever. It was like the most important thing in the fandom. I have a little mini documentary thing that I worked on a couple years ago called The Counteract where I explore queerness in the One Direction fandom and kind of interview people and I talk a lot about Harry holding flags in that little documentary. So go check it out if you haven't seen it or if you've seen it, go rewatch it for the culture. December 3rd, 2015. One Direction play Tattoo Roulette on The Late Late Show, and Harry gets Late Late tatted on him. Sexy. That's all I have to say about this. Long-haired Harry Truthers, stand the fuck up! And those are some of Harry's stick-out moments that I thought were important while he was in One Direction. So now we are going to look more at Harry's solo career and deep dive all three of his eras with little other things that he did in between. So before we get down to talking about HS1 or self-titled, let's talk about some things that happened on the lead up to it just to ease us in, just to get a little comfy. Okay, so on May 6th in 2016, Harry cuts all his hair off the day before my birthday crazy madness literally helicopters car crashes sirens babies screaming ah my leg that's what it felt like when we all found out that harry had cut all his hair off he posts this pic on instagram of all his hair cut off but we don't know what it looks like then alas we see harry's short hair and the rest is history herstory hairstory and most especially hairstory all right, June in 2016, Harry signs a recording contract with Columbia. We knew that he left One Direction's management back in February because it was being reported on. And now he is managed by Jeff Azoff under full stop management. Okay, September 25th, 2016, Harry posts three white squares on Instagram, indicating that something is coming. Everyone is shaking and puking, right? Then, September 26, 2016, the next day, Harry drops his Another Man magazine covers. This was Harry's first like major solo shoot, you know what I mean? So it was a pretty big deal. This shoot though, bury me in it please. When I go, just bury me in the Another Man magazine shoot. Talk about I like to serve. Um, I like serve. He literally graduated from the Servington School of Cuntology. Like this hair, the collar, his clothes. The other thing is that it was super cool to see Harry experimenting with fashion in this time because he started to dabble in it in One Direction, especially through 2015 with like the patterned clothing and the suits that he was wearing. So it was really cool to see him modeling and experimenting further with fashion and getting to do things that he didn't in One Direction. In Harry's Another Man interviews, he talked about transitioning from being in a group to doing solo stuff. He talked a bit about like religion and karma in the future and also talked about his role in Christopher Nolan's film Dunkirk. Which speaking of Dunkirk, Dunkirk. Harry's Dunkirk era was going on like at the same time that his solo era was starting. So it was just all super wild like to have this all going on at once. He said in interviews that he was always interested in acting and he used to do it in school as well. He just never felt like he had the time or capacity to do it while he was working in One Direction. I think a lot of people at the time were really surprised that Harry got casted in a project like this because it's Christopher Nolan, first of all a very well-established and popular director, but also it's a war film. But I think Harry proved himself in that right and did a really good job. And he went to the premiere in this little suit. Mm-hmm. This is peak Dunkirk hair, Harry, right here. Like, short hair, the shoes looking amazing. Okay, March 31st, 2017, after a six-month hiatus from Instagram, Harry announces his debut solo single, Sign of the Times. The lives that were changed this day, y'all. Um, Harry's about to drop his first ever solo single after being in the world's biggest boy band for five years. Like, and this cover art, gorgeous. Looks so indie soft boy album, you know what I mean? Pretty orangey sunset looking background. Harry turned away in the water. Beautifully set the tone for the rest of this album, I think. Y'all know how I am about cover art and Harry passed. Um, I also think that Sign of the Times was a great single choice. He really got to show off his vocals. I really love that um, falsetto on the pre-chorus. Mm -hmm. It just very much shows his style without giving too much away about the rest of the album. And plus Sign of the Time, while it is like a slower ballady kind of song, it also does have touches of rock, which is like 
100% HS1. It has touches of rock. So, so I just thought it was perfect. Great single choice. Amazing song. Sign of the Times, We Gonna Love You Forever. And also, don't crucify me, but I'm not the biggest fan of the Sign of the Times music video. Um, I think actually Sign of the Times is like the weakest music video out of all the ones he has so far. I get what they were going for and I do like the flying away concept. The whole thing was just a little too simple for me. Then we have the debut album announced on April 13th, 2017, released May 12th, 2017. Notice how I was born in May and self-titled was also born in May and he loves me so much. Also, I keep referring to this album as self-titled if you don't know because it's a self-titled album. It's called Harry Styles by Harry Styles. Just in case, you never know if the girls are confused. I gotta take care of you. Where do I even begin with talking about self-titled though? She's so everything to me. First of all, self-titled was partially created in Jamaica. Harry and some of his team went on this writer's retreat to Port Antonio in Jamaica for two months, which I think is so hairy of him and also so cool. I think artists should get to do that. Like when you're creating an album and you have a little bit of a break, if you're not touring and you're working on your album, absolutely. You should go to a destination and find some inspiration and create and just be on a retreat locked away working on your album. I think that's super cool. Harry wrote on every single track for this album. And that was a first because he did not obviously write on every single track from One Direction's albums. It also had four producers, most notably Jeff Basker and Kid Harpoon, who Harry would work with again kid he works with kid a lot i think he still to this day works with kid but yeah self-titled debuted on top of several charts including australia canada the uk and the u.s come on it was the ninth best-selling album of 2017 and made the rolling stones list of top 10 best albums of 2017 so he had a pretty strong debut obviously we're gonna see those numbers get bigger throughout this video um but pretty strong debut and the album itself what can i say masterpiece let's start here the cover immaculate so beautiful and artistic again just giving this indie soft boy like this looks like an underground artist album the necklace the tattoos the pink water the pink water is definitely the best touch um i could have not asked for anything better i really couldn't have this cover is perfect and it's the fact that this album was almost titled pink instead of harry styles I could die, die, flop dead. Like how has serving impacted you? IDK, ask Harry when he did self-titled. I also love this because the visual elements of self-titled match the sound of the album in a way. Sonically, the album is so gentle and flowy and it's giving springtime to me, very much like soft rock and Brit pop. And to me, self-titled is Harry's most indie sounding album. Again, y'all can fight, but I think self-titled sounds like an indie album. Um, so the look just matches the sound so well. I love the vibe he created overall so much. Some artists can struggle to get their footing on their debut album and to like really make it great and make it hold up. But Harry just ate this up and it still holds strong to this day. Like it wasn't like he released the album. It was good for the time, but it's not anymore. Like he released the album. It was really good. And to this day, it's still really good. And it's going to continue to be really good. Like it's timeless. I also think self-titled is skipless. I don't feel like that about all three of his albums, but I personally think self-titled does not have a skip. Argue with the wall. Argue with your mother. So it's this skipless, no feature album with a perfect aesthetic. It's a 10, I'm afraid. 10 out of 10, no notes. <laughs> All right, moving on to May 15th, 2017. We have Harry's 50 minute documentary behind the album comes out exclusively on Apple Music. The documentary showed footage of Harry's writing and recording process for self-titled in Jamaica and Los Angeles. It also features clips of Harry performing the songs from self-titled in London's Abbey Road Studios. May we never forget this documentary. And thank you to the people who put this documentary on Google Drive so you can watch it without Apple Music. Anyway, I love that Harry did the behind the album and I really wish that we could have something like that for every artist that I love um, because seeing the process and like how you developed your album is so cool. Olivia did something really, really similar to this in her film called Driving Home to You for Sour where it was like clips of her performing the album intertwined with like the process of making the album and it's just literally the coolest thing to watch. Like I need a million more of these. September 19th, 2017, we be begin live on tour oh live on tour <laughs> truly 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 so 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 iconic like you had to be there you just had to be there we already knew from one direction especially in their like 2015 era that he was a star 
a performer, an entertainer, an entertainer, not just a performer, but he kept his crowd so entertained, especially like I said, during On the Road Again. So it was amazing to see him in an element of his own and getting to put on his own show. I actually made a list of all the reasons why I think Live On Tour was so iconic. First of all, the rainbow flags constantly. It became such a thing for Harry to like hold up a flag on stage that people started filling the room with them like these shows were a freaking pride parade. Number two, Harry talking to and interacting with the crowd. If you were here for Love on Tour and also for Love on Tour, I feel like you can see the shift in the way Harry interacts with the crowd. The way he interacted with the crowd during Love on Tour was very different than the way he interacted with the crowd during Live on Tour. And during Live on Tour, oh my god, it was just so it was just the quotes that came out of Live on Tour, the inside jokes that came out of Live on Tour, like absolutely unmatched. So funny, so much fun. I hold this time in my life so, so, so close to my heart. Number three is the flower. Every single show of Live on Tour, Harry would be showered in flowers. There was a part of the show where he would come down off the stage and run through the middle and people would just throw like glitter and flowers at him and or hand him like a big bouquet and he would just be walking with his arms just full of flowers um which is the sweetest thing ever a because it's flowers like showing your appreciation for someone with them is super sweet and b like flowers are part of the hs1 self-titled aesthetic so that was also really cute for the tour suits the fucking tour suits how could we ever not include this? How could we ever forget? Just the anticipation of like seeing what he would wear each night because he was pulling out these glittery tour suits, these checkered tour suits, floor tour suits, like five medicine. <laughs> um, he debuted a song that didn't make the album, but ended up being one of his best songs. Like medicine was not on self-titled. It was scrapped, but he started playing it during live on tour. And it wasn't like, will we get medicine tonight? No, bitch. It was on the set list. Can you imagine, like, medicine was just on the set list. You didn't have to worry about if he was going to play it. It was just there. Number six, Chasm. Harry's original band, and Chasm stands for Claire, Harry, Adam, Sarah, Mitch, who were all the members of the band. We already kind of heard Mitch's name before because he had uh, credits on self-titled for writing and stuff. And we had Adam and Claire. Claire got canceled, if y'all remember. But she was there during Live On Tour. Number seven, posting pictures from the show every night. Note for the culture, Harry's OG photographer was named Helene Panbrum. She photographed Harry during Live On Tour and he would show like a bunch of pictures from the show every night. Number eight, the start of the phrase, treat people with kindness. Harry released merch for Live On Tour that was just like a just giant shirt that said, treat people with kindness. There was a yellow one, a white one. I think it was a rainbow one at a time. And it was embroidered into sweatshirts and stuff. And then, you know, he started using it on social media to sign off his tweets like TPWK. The original run of Live On Tour that started in 2017 was a lot more small and intimate. Um, and I loved the stage setup he had for the OG run of Live On Tour because it was like that floral self-titled background that matched the album. That was so cute and so fitting for his show loved that and then in 2018 he began the bigger like most notable version of live on tour with all the stuff that we just talked about um but it was such an iconic tour and i trust that harry had the time of his life november 8th 2017 harry releases the music video for kiwi um do i understand the kiwi music video <laughs> no can i appreciate it anyway absolutely i do love the styling that was done for this music video especially harry matching the main character of the video that was wildly cute. Are you kidding? I also think Kiwi was a great single choice, like I said, about Sign of the Times. Showed off the rock side of his album and was very different than Sign of the Times. And it gave Harry so much personality to the public as a solo artist. June 2018, Harry becomes the face of a Gucci campaign. Harry would wear suits designed by Alessandro Michel. I hope I'm saying his name right. I just looked and I was wrong. Michele. Michele. The shoot is so good. It's one of my favorites of his. His hair, the rings. It's so like Harry Styles TM at this point in our timeline to have hands full of chunky rings. And this all involves Harry once again showing off an interest in fashion and modeling. Things he was destined to do, some may say. Okay, July 16th, 2018. Harry posts one last time after tour ends to essentially say goodbye for a while. He said, kissy. Thank you for coming out to see us. It has been a pleasure playing for you all. I'm off to write some more music and I hope I'll be seeing you again very soon. Thank you to my band, the crew, and all of you for making this tour so wonderful. Treat people with kindness. Goodbye for now. I love you all. 
H. I remember this day so vividly. Kissy was a humongous deal that he said that. Stan Twitter usernames and bios would literally never be the same again. Kissy this, kissy that, literally everywhere. But yeah, he said goodbye for now. And then we began what was called the route, like drought with an H. And during this route, it was just Harry being gone, basically. Actually, let's talk about the route. Hrout. During this route, Harry was seen in Japan a lot. Like that is where he was like mainly staying. One time we got videos of him singing karaoke to Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana in Japan. Um, he was hanging out with the Queer Eye guys at one point because they were also filming in Japan. During this time, he also did another Gucci campaign for a gender neutral fragrance. Some of his most iconic pictures actually came from this fragrance shoot. This photo strip picture, we will never forget you. During this time, rumors were also going around that Harry was going to be casted to play Prince Eric in the live action Little Mermaid. You guys never forget. Do you remember when everyone was like, oh my god, Harry's gonna give up music? Oi, oi, oi. Um, he would have made a really cute Prince Eric though. After seeing the live action Little Mermaid, I was like, okay. I can see how Harry could do this. During this route time, Harry also did a shoot with the face where Stevie Nicks, Stevie Nicks, confirmed that his album was finished. Months prior to this, Harry had inducted Stevie into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And in this time, we have the Met Gala 2019. He literally co-hosted the Met Gala. The theme of the Met Gala that Harry co-hosted in 2019 was camp, which Carly Kloss is looking straight in the eye. What an amazing theme though, right? Like so much potential. I love that the theme was camp and I wanted this to be like spectacular so bad. Who better than Harry Styles also to host the Met Gala when the theme is literally camp? He looked good. He looked good. He looked very, very good. I do agree that he was dressed a little underwhelmingly for the camp theme. Like, camp at the Met Gala should be like a big show of a deal. And then we start warming up for HS2. Let's take a look at how this all went down because, let me tell you, this period of time was batshit insane. So it all begins on September 9th in 2019, when Harry tweets a fan, hey, with 13 Ys. Um, this was a huge deal at the time because Harry at this point did not have very much social media presence. Um, like baby was off duty, especially on Twitter. Back in the day, we used to get all these like really cryptic, exciting, like funny little tweets from Harry, like all his thoughts, things that other people said that he thought was funny, music lyrics, like all kinds of stuff. And then he just kind of stopped doing that. So when he was like, hey, everybody was like, what? Harry's active? So then everybody was like, hmm, he's probably about to drop something. We're probably about to be launched into a new era because he's being active on Twitter. Plus there's 13 Ys in the hey tweet. So people were like, maybe he'll drop something on the 13th. Then... October 5th, 2019. Harry tweets, do. <laughs> oh my God, the fucking madness of this. Girl, I'm like going back in time right now. I'm reliving my trauma. This was pure chaos. The phrase do what in all caps trended number one worldwide shortly after Harry tweeted do, which if that doesn't say impact, I don't know what will. But people were so confused, excited, nauseous. We don't know what's going on. Then on October 9th, 2019 a huge sign that says do you know who you are is spotted in australia um it has the columbia logo on it like the record label columbia and it also says treat people with kindness or tpwk so people know it's harry's sign very obvious and then a bunch more of these big do you know who you are signs started popping up in different places there was some in london tokyo beverly hills new york city and everyone starts freaking out thinking maybe when harry tweeted do that one time he was trying to tweet do you know who you are and accidentally sent it too early for a bit people were speculating that this had nothing to do with his album and it was actually in celebration of john lennon's birthday because this happened on his birthday like the signs being seen and i guess do you know who you are is something that he has said before but looking back on it now like why did we think that <laughs> it's so obvious that simply new music was coming simply like that's all you just have to wait but everyone was like no like this is for something else girl okay then we move to october 10th 2019 harry's team tweets a link to a website called do you know who you are .com. The website basically had you fill in your name and it would generate a positive affirmation. At this point in time, I don't remember what they said, but it was something like, Jasmine, you are wonderful. You are worthy. Just like positive affirmations like that. Um, and they were in the do you know who you are font. Also on October 10th, 2019, Harry appears on the new music section of Spotify. 
The picture that was featured on the New Music Friday section was a picture of Harry from a shoot that no one has ever seen before. So everybody was like, damn, this is real. So then a music video for a song called Lights Up showed up on Harry's YouTube set to premiere at midnight. And he puts a still from the Lights Up music video on Instagram, confirming, yes, bitches, new music is coming. October 11th, 2019, Lights Up is released. Nobody was ever the same after Lights Up. It shook the earth off its axis, bitch. We are suddenly rotating in the opposite direction. That's how powerful Lights Up is. First of all, Lights Up was number one in 44 countries. The video had 10 million views in 28 hours. It was the number one song in worldwide chart. Not to mention, Lights Up was the song that finally beat out Senorita by Camila Cabello as the best-selling song worldwide. This music video was also absolutely insane, especially considering the two that we had gotten during the self-titled era before this. Those music videos were nothing like Lights Up and Lights Up still to this day holds up as one of his best music videos in my opinion the coloring on this video moi so dim and grungy and like cinematic it's giving euphoria like the lighting of this music video the scene with the body surrounding him is so metaphoric and they all look gorgeous styling his outfit like no notes 10 out of 10 i also just love the song lights up itself like taking away the music video it was just so different from the sound of self-titled and i love that i love her so much i've had plans to get lights up knee tattoos forever and i still haven't gotten them but this year i really really want to get a lights up tattoo okay so october 22nd 2019 harry tweets kiwi walked so watermelon sugar could run there is some context behind this tweet that we got to get into so basically on this day there were reports going around that harry taped an episode of a show called later with jules holland and the report was that he performed a new song and people who were there said it's called watermelon sugar so then everybody around like harry's circle of fandom was tweeting about this unreleased song called watermelon sugar and wondering what it could be about what watermelon sugar means what's it what it's gonna be like and a lot of people like pointed out that harry once again had a fruit in the title of his song because he had kiwi on self-titled and then now we know about watermelon sugar so everyone's like ha ha watermelon sugar's the new kiwi so then people in the fandom were tweeting kiwi walked so watermelon sugar could run so harry literally stole this joke from the fandom and tweeted it himself. People were really missing him online, so I thought that was like a funny and cute thing to tweet. Even though Watermelon Sugar is nothing like Kiwi, he really fooled us on that one. Then we have November 4th, 2019. Harry announces his sophomore album, Fine Line. Remember, this was after the great route that we experienced. So his last album was in spring of 2017. So it's been a fucking hot minute. But I also need to note here that Harry announced Fine Line would come out on December 13th. Remember earlier when Harry tweeted, hey, with 13 Ys, and everyone was like, OMG, he's dropping on the 13th? Well, yeah, his album came out on the 13th, so that was on purpose. Wow. Wow. I get delusion will literally win every time. All right, November 13th, 2019, Harry announces love on tour we knew for like a few days in this time that harry was about to announce tour we just didn't know when um we knew because back on the 12th harry's team had tweeted the link to his do you know who you are website that we talked about earlier and so you would click on the link and put in your name to generate the positive affirmations but this time they were saying things like jasmine you're live from new york city jasmine you're front row you're invited like concert related things so we kind of knew that he was about to announce tour Imagine finding out that it's called Love on Tour, though. After, like, Live on Tour was so iconic, and then he's like, hey guys, now it's called Love on Tour. And also, the original Love on Tour design was, like, really different than what it ended up being by the time it ended. The initial tour poster had this boot visual with, like, black text, and I love the heart, the little black heart, in place of the O in the word love. I think this was such a cute tour poster. I love the boot. I love the pink background. It matches the rest of Fine Line so cutely. And for this tour, the openers were supposed to be Jenny Lewis and Coffee in the United States and then King Princess in Europe. Now... November 16th, 2019, Harry hosts and performs on Saturday Night Live. I think Harry doing double duty was just so huge. Everyone was so excited. And it all began with Harry's opening monologue. Let me start with this. I am a hater, okay? And I don't love his outfit here. Um, but whatever makes Harry happy. Moving on. Oh, his hair looks great too, though. 
It was getting long again. Anyway, the monologue itself, funny. I loved the playing the piano while talking bits. It just made sense for him as a musician. Like it was funny. It was a good little bit. The One Direction joke of being like, what if they were here? Well, they're not. Love. I loved that. His delivery on those lines was literally perfect. And that was just such a perfect thing to say, like bringing One Direction into the mix. Calling Zane Ringo, very controversial <laughs> when this happened, girl. But like, Ringo was the first member to leave the Beatles. I get why they put that joke in there. Overall though, Harry is just so cutesy and charming. Like you have to love him. So he was good at this. The other skits that Harry did were pretty okay. Um, I think he handled them really well. Nothing will ever be as memorable as this man's Sara Lee skit. Yeah, the Sara Lee skit easily tops all the other ones. It was the most talked about. It was the most loved. Like it was definitely the moment of the show. SNL got Harry to come on the show and thought, you know what? Let's make him a twinky gay surly intern using the company Instagram to thirst over men. I think the Jason skit was also pretty iconic because the song was used all over TikTok for a while and like Harry fans would sing it. It's sad because the Jason skit was cut for time. So it's just like a bonus clip that you can see on YouTube. So I don't feel like as many people were exposed to it. But Harry's verse of the Jason skit is just wired into my brain chemistry. The other great thing about Saturday Night Live Day was Harry's SNL shoot. We got ballerina Harry. Iconic. Disco ball Harry. Iconic. Mermaid. Harry. Iconic. Harry also performed on SNL, of course. He did Lights Up and Watermelon Sugar, which Watermelon Sugar dropped as soon as SNL started this day. Like he dropped the song at the very beginning of SNL. Like it started to play and then it was like Watermelon Sugar out now at the same time. So yeah, let's talk about Watermelon Sugar real quick. Um, Watermelon Sugar peaked in the top 10 in 20 different countries. 20. Um, number one in the US, Harry's first Hot 100 number one, because before he had a number one for self-titled, but it was a Hot 200 number one. So this was his first real like Billboard 100 number one. Um, it won the Grammy for Best Pop Solo Performance, and it won a Brit Award for Song of the Year in 2021. But Watermelon Sugar is interesting because she was a sleeper success. And if you don't know, a sleeper success is like a song or an album or whatever that releases and isn't very popular or whatever at first doesn't perform well but then later over time for whatever reason it does become popular and shoots back up to the top all of this all of those stats that i just read about the grammys and the number ones and all of that did not happen in november 2019 when watermelon sugar was initially released it actually debuted at number 60 on the charts originally and then hit number one later in august of 2020 and this is because it was originally released as just a promotional single like he was just performing it or whatever um and then it got bumped up to an actual official single the fourth fine line single in may of 2020 and then was promoted and got radio play in a music video. I do think Watermelon Sugar is a good song. Like I love the instruments used in Watermelon Sugar, the horns especially. Um, it's so funky and retro and poppy and feel good. It's so summertime, like literally sunshine embodied. So I do love Watermelon Sugar. I just think it was so overplayed that her brilliance was like overshadowed by this annoyance of it being overplayed. The Watermelon Sugar music video was also very, very fitting for the song. So summertime, there's beach, there's fruit, funky sunglasses, gorgeous women. I love the vibrant coloring in the music video. Then November 21st, 2019. For the people who weren't here for the Sorota thing, or you just don't know what I'm talking about, honestly, buckle up. Harry's big fat mastermind mega genius brain just really went <laughs> all out on this one. I have never, ever seen anything like this. So. so on November 21st, 2019, this random Twitter account who is just a normal, random, everyday person post this thread about this island called Eroda. They showed that they were getting Twitter ads promoting a visit to this island of Eroda. The ad was being promoted for this Twitter account called at visit Eroda. And this account at visit Eroda only had eight followers at the time and was not really following anyone when this random person found it. They had a website in their bio called Visit Eroda, but zero information on where Eroda is or how you can get there to vacation, plan your visit. So this person, the random person on Twitter who got this Eroda ad, Googled Eroda, curiously, 
and couldn't find anything about it at all. Like, it doesn't exist. There's no record of an Arota online anywhere. This website, the Visit Arota website, was really weird initially. Like, the images that were used on this website to show the island were actually just pictures of random places in Europe. The person who found the thread, like, reverse image searched the pictures of Aroda. And they just came up back as random stock images that someone stole off the internet. And also all the links on the homepage of the Erota site redirected to the homepage. So like say it'll be like click here to plan your visit and you click it, it'll just take you back to the homepage. So none of the links worked and all the pictures were just stock images. This is weird. What the fuck is going on? So this person who got the ad did some more digging, yada yada. The Facebook page was marked as being created on November 18th, 2019. And it showed that it was originally visit her with an H instead of a Rota, but then it was changed. But what ended up being really weird, like the weirdest part of this, is that there was people all over the internet posting about Aroda and responding to the Aroda Twitter page as if they have been there on vacation. Like dead serious have been there on vacation. For example, the Twitter account visit Aroda tweeted, what's your favorite memory of Aroda? And someone literally just the randomest like local Twitter account tweeted them and said, I stopped by the castle hoping to just bask in the history and ended up running into an archaeology student studying for her PhD. I learned a lot about how the cultures that used to inhabit Aroda lived. Someone else responded and said, my favorite memory was staying at the bed and breakfast and checking out the fish market and the maritime museum and then leaving on an even numbered day. So all these people were like, yeah, I did this in Aroda. I loved Aroda. Don't leave on an odd numbered day. Like all this crazy, weird, cryptic shit. And then during all this madness, people started finding finding literal like travel pamphlets for Visit Eroda on like random subways in New York or like outside of the subway being advertised like you could pick up the pamphlet and plan you a trip to this island of Eroda. So then it was spreading everywhere and I do need to stress that this wasn't just in the Harry fandom. It didn't reach the Harry fandom until a little bit later, but initially it was just a bunch of random local normal people on Twitter finding all of this and being like, what is this? People thought it was a social experiment. People thought it was a school project. It was crazy. And then Harry fans found it and started digging more. But originally people outside of the fandom were wondering what this was. So it was like a huge thing. And then things slowly start falling into place. First of all, we realize that the word Eroda is just a door backward. And then we realized the homepage of the Visit Eroda site literally says, we adore you with adore emphasized. And we knew from the fine line track list that there's a song on it called Adore You. There was also this spot on the Eroda site for attractions. And one of them is called the Fisherman's Pub, was said to be on the corner of Golden Street and Cherry Way, which are two other songs off of the fine line track list. And then earlier I mentioned that a bunch of people were tweeting and posting about odd number days in Eroda and specifically the 13th, which is the day fine line was supposed to come out. So it all started to kind of fall into place. We were digging up all these things that related to Harry and was all very fishy. So it's like, this is Harry's thing, but why? Then there's these posters spotted of Harry surrounded by fish claiming that adore you is coming out on December 6th. So everyone is like, fish, hmm, visit Eroda's logo is a fish. And Eroda backwards is a door. So this Eroda thing must be about this song, Adore You, that might be coming out on December 6th. Then, December 2nd, 2019, Harry announces Adore You. No. <laughs> right. He also drops the trailer that proved that this whole visit Eroda thing was a promo campaign all along for the music video, Adore You. So this man, his team promoted this island across various platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Spotify, and had local people pretend that they've been there, had this random person purposefully draw attention to it with a thread, got people interested and very confused, created a whole website with extreme detail about this island, attractions, the people you see, the things you can do, all of it. Scattered pamphlets for this island around the city for his music video. Not even the full album, not even the full album. Erota ha was not a fine line thing. Just adore you. Literally, just the adoring music video. Like, the genius meter has exploded. I'm just speechless reliving this all again in the ripe era of 2024. Just one of the best and biggest and craziest promo campaigns I have ever seen. And as someone who's in the music business, like doing management and marketing and PR, like I can only dream of being able to be a part of something like this one day. 
crazy. <laughs> anyway, so now we have Adore You. Adore You peaked at number six on Billboard and number seven in the UK. Um, it made the top 10 in several countries and it went triple platinum. But Adore You was my baby. It was my favorite single for a really long time and I still think it's one of his best singles. It's just so pop princess, so summertime once again, so playful and sweet and psychedelic. The backing vocals are just so cute and so fun to sing along with. The music video is obviously also great because it's so high concept. It's set on the island of Rhoda featuring an iconic nameless fish that saves Harry in the Adore You storyline, Aroda storyline. I'm sure the whole Aroda storyline and the Adore You music video and everything that they did with it is much deeper than that to Harry and like what he was going for, but that's just like the absolute basics of what was going on. Okay, that's Adore You. Moving right along, December 10th, 2019, Harry does Spill Your Guts or Fool Your Guts with Kendall Jenner. Now, I personally expected to hate this, and it's like we wanted Harry to do Spill or Fill for so long, but that felt like a possibility that was really, really out of reach. Like, no way, Harry would never do Spiller Phil. But it was actually really good. It was really funny. Um, Harry's commentary was great. He was really natural at it because the whole thing was that Harry was hosting lately at the time. And I knew he wouldn't say anything about One Direction. I knew it. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed that Scorpion, Harry. Then December 13th, 2019, Fine Line releases. And again, I'll say, lives were changed never the same. This is Harry's beautiful, brilliant, gorgeous second child. She debuted at number one, like thank god we knew. Um, it had the third largest sales week of 2019 overall. It went triple platinum as expected. Um, it was nominated for Album of the Year at the 2020 Brits and Best Pop Vocal Album at the Grammys. So you can literally see the climb from the release of Self-Titled. It's absolutely crazy how humongous Harry got throughout 019 and 020. I know that doesn't make sense, but whatever. Fine Line is best described as a pop rock album with traces of psychedelic pop, funk, soul, and indie pop. It was produced by a new producer Harry hadn't done self-titled with named Tyler Johnson, and then also Kid Harpoon again. So for the cover, we have this beautiful, perfect, gorgeous pink and blue cover. I love the Fine Line album cover once again. 10 out of 10, no notes. I think the color choice was perfect. I love this pose, his pants, the fisheye lens thing. It's just so recognizable and so him. Very unique and creative. Now, I don't love the rest of the Fine Line album shoots, but I do deeply appreciate the vision i will say i love this one a lot a lot a lot and this one i could go on about forever are you kidding me like <laughs> one of the best like shoots of him that i've ever seen this one ended up being like the poster that you got with the vinyl and this being such a vulnerable shot matches the vibe of fine line the album being vulnerable overall so well and i love the yellow room the velvety looking background like the texture to it i think harry had so much fun with this and again i really love the vision fine line aesthetic you are perfect to me so funky so unique so cool and creative sonically this is also such an amazing amazing body of work golden is a standout to be so lonely is a standout sunflower so psychedelic and funky and groovy sunshine embodied fine line one of the best songs i've ever heard like one of the best songs of all time i just saw someone on tiktok covering it on guitar and I would goosebumps like that song literally insane oh my god she the song 10 out of 10 really showed off his falsetto giving us this rock edge giving Mitch another guitar solo um and fine line the album overall is just so summertime to me I said self-titled felt like spring fine line feels like summer it's so feel good it shows off so many different sides of Harry while remaining very cohesive so it's just really special also on December 13th in 2019 when fine line released Harry did his first ever one night only at the forum I know the ticket sales thing was an absolute absolute disaster during one night only um because the tickets were like 25 dollars i think and the scalpers buying them up and reselling them for thousands was like a huge issue but i do love that harry did a one night only in his fine line album cover fit that was really cool i love the checkered stage the fact that he had stevie nicks come and perform as a special guest he performed landslide with stevie nicks like i won't december 18th 2019 harry covers juice by Lizzo. All I have to say is history. Herstory. 
hair story. And then December 19, 2019, Harry does one night only again, but this time the one in London um, because he had to feed his homeland too. I get it. This time he brought Stormzy out to perform as the surprise guest and they performed Vazi Bop in which Harry yelled the lyrics, fuck the government. And I was never the same. February 18th, 2020, Harry performs at the Brits. He performed Falling and it was gorgeous. I love these lace gloves. Also this, I love this look. The purple adds so much. I don't know why it works, but it works for me. It's very fine line era of him. Someone is calling me. Oh yeah, Harry was also very drunk at the Brits this year. He was like crawling around on the floor and shit. Per use, good for him. <laughs> February 26, 2020, Harry performed on the Today Show. And I'm only putting this in this deep dive because of what he wore to the rehearsal. This J.W. Anderson cardigan changed the direction the earth rotates on its axis. Crocheting this cardigan went viral all over TikTok and every one of their mothers had one. He never looked better. This is literally probably my favorite look he's ever worn of all time. I can't get over it. Like aesthetic king. He looks amazing. This outfit, I can't. And this cardigan also is now on display at a museum. So that's all you need to know about its impact. <laughs> all right, February 28th, we have the premiere of the Falling music video. His prettiest project for sure. His outfit, I could go on and on about this lavender piece. So, so, so beautiful. The rings, the piano, the paintings on the wall behind him, this room and the design in general. And then you have the room filling with water. Oh my God. It's just so, 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 so good. This is why I said Fine Line should have like music videos for every song and be a visual album because every music video that we got for Fine Line was just perfect. Every single one of them matched the aesthetic of the song perfectly. Like couldn't have done it better. March 17th, 2020, we have Harry for Beauty Papers slayed the house down. Harry in makeup, first of all. Harry in fishnets, second of all. I remember so vividly this was during like quarantine, the, like the very beginning of quarantine, and this magazine sold out online completely and people were <laughs> printing it off at home. July 8th, 2020, Harry appears on an app called Calm reading a bedtime story to help users fall asleep. Y'all remember this? For context, Calm, the Calm app does have like a celebrity section. They didn't just randomly ask Harry to come and read a bedtime story. They do it with celebrities. Um, but the fact that Harry got chosen to do it just says so much. He also has a very relaxing voice, so I kind of get it. So this chunk of time in the summer, we're in July of 2020 right now. From July, like to the fall, there was not much going on with Harry because of the pandemic and quarantine. It was just like a lot of seeing him like walking, like going on a walk outside, stuff like that. Then moving on throughout the fall, October 26, 2020, the golden music video comes out. Again, I will say all his final music videos are perfect. I do mean all of them. He was literally running and driving around gorgeous Italy in this flowy white tank top, these lace gloves, so golden vibes, and they just keep getting it right. He also did a promotional campaign in this time where you could make your own like golden postcards. December 2nd, 2020, Harry posts, bring back manly men on Instagram, quoting Candace Owens, who was talking shit about his clothing choices. This was an insane clap back at the time because once again, Harry did not have social media presence like this and he has never been one to like respond to things, you know what I mean? And create drama, but he clapped back. January 1st, 2021, Harry drops the music video for Treat People With Kindness, jump scare. Not jump scare meaning I hate treat people with kindness, but jump scared like this music video came out of nowhere. <laughs> um, I think it was Vivo dropped a trailer for it the day before and everybody was like, what is this? Is this going to be real? Because usually a lot of times throughout the Fine Line era and Harry's house era, we have seen Harry shooting music videos. Like people have leaked photos of him on set of music videos and we knew they were coming, but nobody really saw anything about treat people with kindness at all. But anyway, the music video is amazing. Who was surprised at this point? Him learning choreography for this was iconic. Like I love the glittery suit. I love that Phoebe Waller-Bridge is also in a suit in this video. There was a lot of obvious nods to like getting rid of gender norms in this video. And it's this would be the last of all the Fine Line music videos. But like I said, they were all so good. Literally every single one of them was perfect. 10 out of 10. No, no. Okay, so then April 3rd, 2021, Harry wins his first ever Grammy and he also performs. Firstly, his look. 
at this Grammys performance, this open leather set and green boa. This is literally perfect. And the boa sales after this, they would never be the same. Maybe I just hate fun, okay? But I didn't see the vision for this look on the red carpet. But you know what? Who cares? Watermelon Sugar won a Grammy. And then in May, Harry also won a Brit Award. It was May 11th in 2021. He looked cute. I like the sleek hair. It's giving candy bar, but it's so him that I cannot complain. Like, okay, Willy Wonka, you really just look great. He looks amazing, so I can't complain. And I love his little bag. That is such a cute little touch. It's so good. It looks so good with the suit that he's wearing. September 4th in 2021, Harry kicks off Love on Tour. Remember a long time ago, in this video when I said that Love on Tour was announced. It was announced with the graphic of a boot, like the boot picture. COVID postponed all of those shows and now we're here in 2021 to actually do Love on Tour, which is branded differently now than it was when it was originally announced. So we have Love on Tour circa 2021, not to be confused with the second half of Love on Tour that would happen later, but the OG Love on Tour in 2021 had a fine line heavy set list because it was technically the tour that went along with fine line. This set list, it was very fine line heavy, but it did have sprinkles of HS1 and Harry also covered, covered? He sang What Makes You Beautiful. So on Love on Tour, he ditched like the glittery and checkered tour suit thing. And now he was wearing like sets and suspenders. We also have a new band. Goodbye, Claire and Adam. Hello, love band. Iconic group of people, some may say. Especially Polly. We love you. Also, during the OG run of Love on Tour in 2021, we got the Love on Tour bunnies. They were on merch on this like checkered background. They were in his tour visuals as well. Just like during HS1, Harry would go on to post a picture from each show on Instagram after the show. So that was really cool. But this time when he posted the pictures, they were shot by a new photographer named Anthony, not Helene Panbrum, who shot live on tour and this run of like the og love on tour 2021 lasted until november or around november then harry goes on a little bit of a tour break and then we come back for love on tour 2.0 in june of 2022 this time the theming of it is designed with these colorful letters and no longer fine line themed at all and this was after the release of harry's house spoiler alert but the set list this time killed off most of self-titled like it only left Sign of the Times and Kiwi. That's it. Nothing else from self-titled. And this set list also killed off a good chunk of Fine Line, like half a Fine Line, and replaced it with a bunch of Harry's House songs. This time during Love on Tour, like 2.0 in 2022, the outfits are just wild and we've completely lost the plot and I don't know what he's doing anymore. The OG run of Love on Tour outfits were pretty okay, like pretty good. Those like suspender set outfits from 2021. But Love on Tour 2022, he just started wearing like so many polka dots and stripes and polka dots with checkers and these like gigantic pearls but some of them ended up being really good i love this blue set so much tits out like amazing harry also got a new photographer again in this time his name is lloyd wakefield and then also during 2022 harry would start playing residency shows and then you have the third chunk of love on tour 3.0 if you will that happened in 2023 <laughs> So we are now in the third year of this tour. And between all of these chunks of Love on Tour, the merch was changing. Like we had different designs. The love band grew while Love on Tour was going on. They added more people. Um, there was a million different openers. We had Mitski, Arlo Parks, Wolf Alice, Wet Leg, Inhaler. Another really important thing about Love on Tour, though, I will say is like the concert fashion it inspired. Love on Tour specifically was the catalyst for a very specific like over the top style of dress people would like go on to be inspired by for other people's concerts. Not just the millions of boas, but these very like sparkly and camp looks that took dressing up for Harry shows to a new level that we didn't really see in the same way during Live on Tour. And I do, not to keep shouting out my own videos, but I do have a video on concert fashion and how Love on Tour inspired it. So if you want more about 
that, definitely go check it out. Love on Tour's impact overall, though, is just absolutely crazy. The fashion, the people getting the bunnies tattooed, the freaking banner that they put up at Madison Square Garden celebrating Harry's 15 sold out shows there. I'm not done with the Love on Tour stuff, though. I also <laughs> have to mention that another little subcategory of Love on Tour is Harry Ween. If you don't know, Harry Ween is a Halloween show, like a concert that Harry puts on for Halloween specifically. They usually take place on on the 31st or like the 30th and 31st and Harry and his band all dress up according to a theme and everyone who comes also obviously wears Halloween costumes as well. And it's just like a big Halloween party show. For the first Harry Ween in 2021, the whole love band dressed up like the Wizard of Oz characters with Harry dressing up as Dorothy. The shock, the panic. The dress and bow just looks so good. The freaking tights. Oh my god. I love that this outfit is not the exact same version as the one that Dorothy was wearing in the movie, but kind of his own thing. This is one of those moments that just like sticks out in Harry's career timeline. There's just certain things that are more iconic than others, and him being Dorothy is just one of the biggest like wow moments. So... God bless. So for the second night of Harry Ween in 2021, Harry dressed up as Pierrot, a clown with a really deep and interesting history. I wish we would have gotten an interview or something from Harry where he talks about his inspiration for his Harry Ween looks because I would love to hear one on the clown. This one was just so well executed and really well suited for his character. Again, I love that he kind of had his own take on the character and it was super cool. This is also when he covered Toxic by Britney Spears for the culture. So, And then, of course, the following year in 2022, there was another Harry Ween. This time, Harry dressed up as Danny Zuko from Greece, and the love band was other, uh, like, Greece characters, like pink ladies and such. This costume was so unexpected to me, but his commitment to the hair was so fun, and I love that he's saying hopelessly devoted to you. Something about that is just so Harry of him. Now that we've sort of explored Love on Tour, let's go back in time a little bit and start a new timeline, kind of going through what he was doing while Love on Tour is going on. So November 5th, 2021, Harry is featured in an end credit scene of the Marvel film Eternal. He is playing the brother of Thanos, who y'all probably know is one of Marvel's most well-known like villains at this point. We knew he was going to be playing in a Marvel movie. Like there was speculation about that for a long time. I think back in 2020, there was articles about him playing in a Marvel movie. I'm unsure if Harry is going to continue working with the MCU or not, but I do know that Eternal sort of left off on a cliffhanger. So there is a possibility that they'll ask Harry to come back. But as of right now, I am not sure. November 15th, 2021, Harry announces his brand Pleasing. Pleasing is a beauty line with several different collections they've had now. Um, they make nail polish, skin serums, fragrances, merch and apparel. Harry first announced this company via Dazed when he posted this shoot. This iconic look slayed boots, right? <laughs> Then it also gave us these bold looks that were really deeply criticized on Twitter.com. Like Mr. Grinch if he slayed. I don't know. Pleasing though. Super cute. Um, their slogan is find your pleasing. That's why everyone keeps begging them to make vibrators. I mean... I think Pleasing has a pretty recognizable brand though and their collections have all been themed really cutely and super aesthetically. I know some people are very hypercritical about Pleasing's pricing. Especially like compared to the quality of their products but I have never purchased pleasing because for one thing the first few drops were for nail polish specifically and I am a lesbian with very short nails who doesn't paint them somebody sell me a pleasing sweatshirt please from your closet okay so then we move into March 2022. March 18th, 2022 specifically, Twitter account at you are home tweets the words, you are home. Random Twitter account created in February 2022, only a month prior, like a rota. Okay. Um, then random ads are spotted all over the place in newspapers advertising a site called youarehome.co. People were like, hmm, this could be hairy because apparently we never learned. So they're like, hmm, this could be hairy because one, we've obviously seen this pattern before, so it wouldn't be the most outrageous thing. Two, there was already wide speculation going around that Harry's next album had something to do with home slash house. And we also saw Harry shooting a music video in pajamas on a bed. 
So the home thing is not too far off. We've already gotten kind of hints that that could be. So then on March 19th, the Your Home account tweets, the door is open, come on in. And their website is updated so that um, the door on display is now open and there's a picture in the background of it. So then for the next 61 days in a row, every single day at the same time, this account tweets something and the picture behind the door of the website will change. And it was May 23rd when Harry announced his third studio album, Harry's House, and dropped the cover. The picture behind the door this day was also the album cover and the corresponding tweet was, welcome home. So Your Home did end up being another Harry promo project. Surprise, surprise. The Twitter account posted a lot of things related to the album, like lyrics sometime. Leading up to Harry's late single, The Doors were teasing snippets of his music video, like as it was and stuff like that. Honestly, Harry's promo campaigns are criminally underrated. They really started during the Fine Line era and then came back again during Harry's house. So I imagine he'll continue with them and I really hope so, at least for now. Okay, so moving right along, March 28, 2022, Harry announces his lead single, As It Was. Interesting that he dropped the album title and cover like before his lead single. He had not done that before, but this time we were, we knew about Harry's house and then we got As It Was. Perfect single choice. Mwah. Again perfect single choice. I love this as a lead single for Harry's house specifically. It was a different style of music for him and it showed off that we were getting something new. It's catchy, super playable on radio and really set the tone for what the rest of the album was going to be like. And also hearing, come on Harry, we want to say goodnight to you for the first time. It damaged me permanently. Like that was so good. <sighs> And the music video, the way he bangs his fist against the glass in the beginning to the beat of the song, <laughs> scratches an itch so deeply into my brain. His outfit, this coat, the blue and red jumpsuit, and the concept of this video as a whole. I am so obsessed with all the choreography, the visual metaphors, again, very much setting the tone for the rest of Harry's house and bringing a new music video style altogether, like very different from the fine line ones. They have their own voice. It was extremely popular too. Like we thought Watermelon Sugar was the Harry Styles song and then As It Was came to kill her. As It Was was number one, obviously. Um, it was the longest running number one and best selling song in 2022 overall and was the third longest running number one in all of Billboard's chart history. It earned the Guinness World Record title for the most streamed track on Spotify within 24 hours by a male artist and broke the Apple Music streaming record for most first day streams for a 2022 release. Nominated for four Grammys and one song of the year at the Brits. So I guess nobody can gatekeep Harry now. <laughs> April 15th, 2022, Harry headlines Coachella. But Harry headlining Coachella was obviously a really big deal and, and it said a ton about where he's at in his career. During weekend one, first of all, he went on stage wearing this rainbow sequin jumpsuit. So Harry, so beautiful, so perfect for like a big stage like Coachella and especially a festival. Harry also debuted songs from Harry's house called Late Night Talking and Boyfriends on the Coachella stage. But he also brought shania twain on stage and performed man i feel like a woman and you're still the one when that let's go girls hit i hit the ground immediately like take cover bitch i cannot believe he did this he literally just worked in a bakery he liked to serve um i like serve. now he's serving headliner at coachella performing on stage with shania twain so then weekend two comes around. His outfit was amazing once again. This gorgeous pink set with strawberries on it and HS across his ass. Like, who's doing it like this? Concert fits were never the same after this. So many people copied this look for Love on Tour and like made their own little pink set like his Coachella one. This time for the performance, Harry brought Lizzo on stage and they performed Gloria Gaynor's I Will Survive. Harry and Lizzo have been public friends by this point for a while, for a few years. So it made sense that he brought her on to perform. They also sang What Makes You Beautiful and they were in gigantic furry coats together. So then big moment, big moment, May 20th, 2022. We get Harry's house, the cover of Harry's house. Guys, I'm so sorry, but I love her so much. I can't criticize his covers. I try. I fight for my life to find something wrong with them. But again, he just crushed it. I have loved all three of his album covers and have 
I've had no notes on any of them. Like, I'm sorry. Pulling together this house concept was so, so cool. I love the touch of the upside down furniture. It adds so much more to this album than if he was just standing there with the couch behind him. It still would have looked good. But the fact that it's upside down like that is so hairy and it makes it so much more funky. I love it. I also love his outfit. The top is giving very much baby doll. I think that style of shirt is actually called baby doll. Um, and the flared jeans are so him. Like, I love that touch that the jeans are flared like that. It's gorge no notes your honor and then sonically where do we even begin i think harry's house is probably my favorite album of his which was really hard for me to make that decision but i've done my thinking over like a year or so now and i've made up my mind fine line is nothing like anything else i've heard ever in the best way possible self-titled was the perfect debut with the most perfect aesthetic but there's just something about Harry's house. It's so achingly Harry Styles, like just oozing with his style and personality, like Harry core. That's what Harry's house is. And it's definitely because of the production. It's so different and so fun. His production on this is unlike, I mean, kind of similar to Fine Line, but just like unlike any other songs that he has. I think some personal favorites among fans are Grape Juice, Daylight, Little Freak, Satellites. People also loved Matilda, of course, for its like lyricism and themes, especially that of chosen family and starting a better life without feeling guilty. So a lot of children of like immigrant parents hold Matilda close, queer people hold Matilda close, and older sisters who are forced into like mother roles also hold Matilda close. Like there's just so many different things you can apply it to and it was just really special and people ate it up. I think the public also really loved Harry's house. Um, it debuted with Harry's best first week sales of his whole career so far. It was number one in many, many countries and was the fastest and best selling album of 2022 overall. It won album of the year at the Brits and the Grammys and it was included in Rolling Stone's list of the top 500 best albums of all time. Um, so like just an insane album, insane stats and just so, so loved and for good reason. Also on album day, Harry did another one night only like he did for Fine Lines release. Um, this one was in New York City. It was filmed in HD for Apple Music, which I loved. That was a great touch to have access for like people to be able to watch it. And the setup for this was really cute. He had that giant lit up house behind him. That was so cool. And he also did a second one night only in London, of course. I'm really, really glad that he kept these and I hope he does them again. Then in June of 2022, Harry was the cover star of Better Homes and Gardens for their 100th anniversary issue. This was really cute because Harry's house, Better Homes and Gardens is like homey, housey, like, so that was a good collab you get it the cover is gorgeous i love that the title matches his pearls that's such a cute little touch and the rest of the shoot was really good as well i was really happy with this feature on july 13th 2022 we get a late night talking music video i was really happy with late night talking as a harry's house single it just makes a lot of sense and i'm surprised late night talking wasn't as big as other songs i do love the music video again he did a great job of creating a very specific tone for music videos throughout one era but the harry's house ones are also so harry's house very very experimental and like a little bit strange like that was the tone for all of his harry's house music videos except as it was but everything after as it was like they just had this undertone of very strange weird and quirky and they're all like that and the fine line ones were not like that Moving right along to September 23rd in 2022, Olivia Wilde's film, Don't Worry Darling, premieres, starring Harry and Florence Pugh with Chris Pine, Gemma Chan, and Nick Kroll, among others, Roller Coaster. This was literally the craziest time to be a Harry Styles stan. We were in the trenches fighting for our lives every single day during this because this man said this movie feels like a movie and nobody let it go there was rumors flying that he spit on chris pine for a long time and everyone hates olivia wilde apparently including florence pew i will say though that all the drama surrounding don't worry darling got people to see it and got people talking like you know what they say about bad press but don't worry darling was harry's first time actually starring in something on the big screen since his role in dunkirk was more minor and his little small tiny role in eternals was even more minor but this time we really got to see harry act 
The movie, if you don't know, is a psychological thriller about an experimental town set in the 50s where nothing is as perfect as it seems. Hmm. Um, Harry played a working husband named Jack who was married to Florence Pugh's character Alice. I don't think that Harry was bad in this role. I saw so much, so many different opinions and criticism on this. I don't think he was bad in the role. I just think it was a little bit clear that he was the least experienced. I mean, come on, you're acting against Florence Pugh, Chris Pine. Like they did amazing because they're like, well, established very talented like experienced actors i get why people say it's a little predictable and there's definitely a lot of plot holes and things that don't make sense about it but i do think it was really interesting and i love the costume and set design a lot so then shortly after don't worry darling on october 21st 2022 another harry movie comes out that he starred in called my policeman this is a film where harry's character marries a woman but has a same-sex affair with the museum curator in a time where homosexuality was illegal based on the novel by beth and robert much less press and like drama going on for this movie i mean people were seated and wanted to see it but like much less crazy than the circus of don't worry darling but it was really well received and it had some beautiful scenes i know there was some disappointment over like some scenes that they cut in the movie that were in the book. But Harry handled this role super well and talked about it so passionately. Like we know that he really, really wanted the role and was a fan of the book. So I'm glad he got to do it. And I wish it was more talked about. Okay, October 27, 2022, the music for a sushi restaurant music video premiered. I was not expecting us to get a music video for music for a sushi restaurant. The most unique song on Harry's house in his own right. It might also be one of his most unique songs in general probably music for a sushi restaurant and um treat people kindness are like very very unique and very very hairy core in this music video he is styled as a sea creature like not quite a mermaid maybe a squid and it's super metaphoric the shop is going to chop him up until they realize he can sing and then he's suddenly worth something until the end when his voice gets messed up so they're like you're done basically saying through this music video that people will use you up until you're done and then toss you away completely um especially in the music industry i presume so kudos to him for how much detail goes into his music videos seriously november 2022 harry does another gucci campaign called gucci ha 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 this is probably my favorite campaign he's ever done for gucci um the shoot is just so good my absolute favorites from this are this one this one this one this one this one the neutral background with that pretty tile on the floor is so perfect. He was styled so cutely. He looks amazing. Then alas, February 4th, 2023, Harry wins the Grammy for Album of the Year. He also wins for Best Pop Vocal Album. So obviously Harry's house was on fire. Not Harry's house was not on fire. Not up in flames, but the album Harry's house was on fire. Harry's look this time though, red carpet fit eight. It was very much giving him in his Harry's house era, sort of similar to what he'd wear on stage. Um, I didn't like his actual awards outfit as much. The sparkles are cute and fun and I like the white jacket, but the pants just throw it all off for me. Harry also performed at the Grammys this year. He did as it was with a team of dancers featuring that spinny rotating platform from the music video. There was actually a malfunction during the show though where, where the platform started spinning the wrong way. Like they had rehearsed it and choreographed it for ages going one way and then suddenly it started moving the other way during the show. But the dancers and Harry handled it really well. So May 3rd, 2023, Harry releases a music video for Satellite. Um, It stars a robot named Star. Stomper. He was seen I love on tour in real life and nobody really knew why and his name is Stomper because during love on tour Harry performed satellite and would stomp in a very specific way during the beats and they became known as the satellite stomps. So then now the robot for satellite is named Stomper. In the music video, Stomper wanders around love on tour, which is really cute and wholesome. He ends up seeing a film about the Mars rover called Curiosity and how it's lonely. So Stomper ends up wandering the planet looking for it and then dies in front of the NASA building. Why? Ruined my life when that little robot died. But literally a crazy concept, like his mind is just so beyond me, this creative genius. And then July 19th, 2023, we get another music video. Harry releases the Daylight music video. Harry's fandom wondered like for ages what he filmed wearing this yellow bird costume because we had gotten a picture of it a long time before this music video came out. So we went through so many guesses and then landed on a Daylight music video and there she was. I think this music video is super light and playful, which is great for a song like Daylight. The circus 
Harry's theme is fun and everyone is styled amazingly. It also keeps up the tone of the rest of Harry's house era music videos. Then at the end of July, y'all, Harry finishes Love on Tour and dips. The latest news we've had about Harry was that he shaved his head bald. Gave me some trauma, I won't lie. But if he's happy, good for that little egghead. And now we wait to see what he cooks up for HS4. I'm so curious. Everyone remember this very moment in time when something new happens. And if you like this video, please give it a like and share. You guys can keep up with what I'm doing on my social media is always linked down in the description. Go follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. But yeah, thanks for watching. Harry Styles, I love you. Open.